Sailing across the oceans of the world is not what it used to be. Whether shipping cargo or people across the waves, we've come a long way from the wooden ship days. In fact, some of these vessels could probably use their own zip code because they're literally floating cities. Hi, I'm Larry, and today on What Lurks Below, we actually show you what sails above the 10 ships that will blow your mind. But first, here's a quick question. Who were the first to build ships? Ancient Polynesians, Ancient Egyptians, Sumerians, or Vikings? Stick till the end to find the answer. Starting our top 10 most amazing megaships is the Azam. It's the biggest private yacht on the face of the Earth. At 180 meters, or almost 600 feet long, it is the biggest of what are called super yachts and scoots across the water at a top speed of 35 miles an hour. German made in 2013 after two years of construction, the interior of this maritime monster still remains mostly a mystery. The bit that is known about the inside is described as a very relaxed French Empire style. It's unconfirmed, but reported to be owned by one of the members of the royal family of Abu Dhabi of the United Arab Emirates. So you can bet no luxury has been spared. Cost $620 million. If entertain me is your mantra, you need to sail this next eye-popping ship, the Oasis of the Seas. The Royal Caribbean Cruiser is a floating center of entertainment and experience worthy of most anyone's bucket list. It was the world's largest cruise ship when it was launched in 2009. While it is no longer the King Kong among ships prowling the seas, it is a king in the cruise ship entertainment world ready to keep some 6,300 passengers engaged. This city of a ship offers multiple theaters for Broadway quality plays and musicals to comedy act performances. The Rising Tide Bar is a moving waterhole that provides a picturesque view as it travels from the Royal Promenade level to Central Park, which is a gorgeous world of its own, full of all sorts of natural beauty. When you're ready to pick up the pace again, there's a zip line over the boardwalk that will dial up your pulse, rock climbing, or believe it or not, ice skating. The variety and numbers of shops and restaurants on the Oasis is more exhaustive than most cities, with activities for young adults, young children, and teens as well as special needs kids. It is a ship that has few rivals in entertaining its passengers. Next, you expect military ships to be pretty big, but the USS Gerald Ford is off the charts. Commissioned in July of 2017, this nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is a first in a next generation of supercarriers that has no equal in size and capability. Its length spans just over 1,100 feet and can accommodate 75 fighter jets and up to 5,000 sailors as it cruises along the seas. But in this case, it's not size that necessarily counts but the technology that this Goliath has on board, from the most advanced tracking tools that keep a close eye on any approaching enemy force to futuristic firepower, including what are called rail guns. These super cannons can fire missiles at seven times the speed of sound. You'll probably want to rub your eyes when you see this next one, because you may not believe what you see. The strangest ship ever built, but actually looks more like a floating pizza. The Novgorod was built by the Russians in the 1870s to patrol the Black Sea. It had a circular hull with a diameter of 101 feet. Two 12-inch guns were on board that retracted into a protected cover when those guns were in the firing position, they could be moved around by a revolving deck that could swing around by 35 degrees in either direction. Six engines with one propeller each scooted this battleship along. When this vessel proved its seaworthiness, a second, slightly larger one was built and called the Popov after its designer. 
While it served its purpose, it was seen as more of a curiosity than a big weapon. Because of the circular hull design, it could flounder even in calm waters, and when it was not moving forward, this ship had a tendency to spin in circles. Not sure if sick bags were part of the sailors' equipment on this vessel, but after serving in the Russian Navy for a time, these ships were retired by the early 1900s. The ship that took the longest time and money to build? That has to go back to the USS Gerald Ford, a highly controversial ship because of construction delays and resulting costs that mounted up. This ship is a marvel in not just its technological abilities, but the time it took to build it ended up being a whopping 12 years. The cost? An unprecedented $13 billion. That's with a B, dollars, with an additional $4.7 billion in development and research costs tacked on. An accountant's nightmare. The next amazing megaship also serves in the military, the USS Zumwalt. This is not your father's battleship. It dons a unique look that seems more similar to a modern submarine than a battleship, but this is meant to stay on top of the water. It is the most technologically advanced warship in the world, possessing weapon systems with special high-targeting abilities that can make them lethal, even at extreme distances, and the fact that it has the ability to remain virtually invisible to most modern radar and tracking systems makes it a true threat, whether it's in the open water or close to the shore. Its cutting-edge engine is powered by electricity generating enough juice to operate this whole ship and the surplus power to operate a small city. That gives the battleship the ready capability to power new weapons and defense systems as they're developed. If you like speed on the open water, well, your ship has come in at number five. While not a speedboat in the truest sense of the term, this baby can flat out move. The Francisco is essentially a Concorde jet on water. This catamaran can slice through the sea at close to 70 miles an hour because of its specially designed aluminum hull and a pair of jet engine turbines working on liquid natural gas. It's a high speed commuter ferry that operates between Buenos Aires and Montevideo while it pushes across the water at Autobahn-like speeds. It does so carrying up to 1,000 passengers and 150 cars. Now that's power. Next, we slow the speed down but dial up the luxury. The cruise ship most likely to make you feel like you're a movie star is the Queen Mary II. The floating icon of the seas has recently emerged from a $132 million renovation and it shows. With decidedly an Art Deco motif in some of its more popular rooms like the Princess Grill and the Queen Grill Suites, the ship's owner, Conrad, clearly has has gone all out to accommodate passengers. Guests can take advantage of the only planetarium on the seas and the biggest library on water. The Illuminations Theater is one of the biggest attractions, spotlighting a variety of shows and entertainment for everyone. And to make you feel like you're back in the golden age of ocean cruises, cavernous ballrooms with glittering crystal chandeliers, detailed decor, and service await your every whim. Passengers' personal touches include a nightly turndown service complete with fresh baked biscuits. It defines affluence on the high seas. It is the largest and only major ocean liner built since the Queen Elizabeth II was built in 1969. Since the QE2's retirement from transatlantic duty, the Queen Mary II has taken over as the pinnacle of pampering. Many of these megaships are huge because they have to be equipped for long trips. That's what they do. But one sailed on a voyage longer than any of them. This 70-foot schooner named Anne was taken for quite a ride by its owner, Reed Stowe. He took the helm on a marathon of a trip with the goal of staying at sea without touching land for 1,000 days. But he ended up doing better than that. 
he broke the old continuous open sea record of 1,067 days set by a Norwegian sailor in 1896. Stowe stayed on the water for 1,152 days. He set out on April 21st, 2007 from Hoboken, New Jersey, sailing around the world, taking more than three years to do it, arriving in New York on June 17, 2010. This experience included some close calls too, including sailing too close to a U.S. Naval test firing site, running into a huge container ship, and surviving a wicked storm near Cape Horn at the southern tip of South America. All this without the resupplying of any food or supplies. It didn't make the official Guinness Book of World Records because Stowe says he couldn't afford the submission fee before taking the journey. However, his GPS indeed confirmed his marathon at sea was legit. Coming in at number two of the most impressive megaships is this lumbering giant. It's the CSCL Globe, a good name for it. Owned by the China Shipping Container Lines, the Globe can transport more than 19,000 22-foot containers on its deck. Built in South Korea by Hyundai Heavy Industries, this ship is more than 1,300 feet long. That's longer than four football fields. It's used mostly as a courier for trade between Asia and Europe, but it truly is an amazing ship that can float an amazing load. So what is the biggest ship, period, ever? At the top of the list of mega ships has got to be the Sea Wise Giant. Launched in 1979, it's generally considered the longest and the heaviest ship ever built. It stretched more than 1,500 feet long and fully loaded, weighed more than 560,000 tons. This truly was the big Bertha of all ships. It had quite a checkered past, too. Caught in the crossfire of the Iran-Iraq War in 1988, this supertanker was sunk off the coast of Iran after the war ended. It was resurrected, salvaged, and repaired, eventually hitting the seas again under the new name of Happy Giant. In fact, it also has to rank as the ship with the most names. Originally called the Seawise Giant, this supertanker has been given four other identities, last going by Mont when it was retired and sold for scrap in 2010. So, who were the first to build ships? Well, it was the ancient Egyptians. Although simple raft or sails were being used as far back as 10,000 years ago, the Egyptians were the first to build holes out of planks and actually built ships instead of floating on random stuff. While this may not have been the deadliest tsunami, it is still responsible for turning many African coastline cities into rubble.